Hello, Empowered Woman. Welcome to this episode of the Empowered Woman Podcast. And today we are continuing on with my special Empowered Woman Book and Path series, where I'm interviewing several women who have read and left me a review on Amazon for my book, The Empowered Woman, The Ultimate Roadmap to Business Success. We talk about and we walk through the five steps of the path, and they also get to share their personal empowered path to success in life and business. My next guest is Brooke Daniels. She's a seasoned entrepreneur, having co-founded several successful businesses with her husband. She is also a real estate and angel investor and advisor for several organizations, and she's on a mission to halt the flow of business failure with her signature Ready Aim Launch system, which helps to level up startups to seasoned companies. We had such an amazing conversation. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Empowered Woman Podcast the number one show on personal growth, visibility, and profit for women entrepreneurs. If you're wanting to start believing in yourself, giving yourself permission to succeed, and let your voice be heard to make an impact in the world as an entrepreneur, this is the place for you. I am so glad that you're here. My name is Marta Spurk, and I'm your host, triplet mom, woman empowerment coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. Hi, Brooke. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Marta. Super excited to be here. I know I am too. Uh, So this is part of the Empowered Woman book series, and I'm super excited to walk through the five steps and comparing it in terms of your journey as an empowered woman in your empowered woman path. But before we get to them, I would love for you to tell us more about you. Who are you and what do you do in the world? Absolutely. I am Brooke Daniels. And I would say that I am obviously an empowered woman, which I love that you're bringing everyone together under that banner, but a CEO of Daniels & Co., which is a business strategy firm, specifically helping founders and entrepreneurs build highly profitable businesses and to maximize their scalability. So really, I'm an entrepreneur. I've spent a lot of my career in tech and venture capital and high growth startup companies. And I love that I now have the opportunity to bring that to startup founders who want to create that financial freedom and time that a lot of us seek in our lifestyles. Yes. Wonderful. And I know that you talk a lot about being mentally fit to build our wealth. So I'm super interested in your take on this path when it comes to mindset and when it comes to uh, building your finances and building financial time and financial freedom as well. So let's jump right in and talk about the first step, which is noticing yourself. Um, How does that come into play? when it comes to uh, being mentally fit, when it comes to building your wealth and and building a profitable business? I love that you start with notice yourself because I think a lot of times we miss and skip over that step. Mm -hmm. And many of us were taught growing up that we had to pursue careers to make money or find a stable job. And we felt like we had to put away the true aspects of ourselves. We weren't talking about passion. We weren't talking about purpose. And noticing yourself, I think, really goes to that, which is getting back to honoring who we truly are, Mm -hmm. what our passion and purpose is, and realizing that those are actually the ways to build success. If you're walking in your purpose and you're serving, that actually takes you to where you want to go a lot faster. I wish someone would have told me this when I was 21 or 22. Right. I've gotten there quicker. But along those lines, too, it's, it's honoring yourself and what you and your body needs. And so for me, every day for me to show up as the best version of myself requires me to meditate, which I love. It's been life changing. I started meditating almost three years ago and am now uh, pursuing becoming a certified meditation coach. Wow, that's amazing. Yoga gets me going in the morning, but it's different for everyone. Right. And so I think you notice yourself is around tapping into what you need to do to show up as the best version of yourself and knowing that that is actually the best way to get uh, the results and success that you uh, pursue faster. That is so true. And I always like to say the things that we like today, they didn't start right now. They we, we, It started manifesting itself from childhood. And I see a lot of this in my kids. Um, it, it's so fascinating how people are born with certain inclinations and we 
often lose sight of that because we are told, no, this is the right path. Well, not for everybody. <laughs> Let's foster the things that were already there. So I love that you uh, made that connection to our career and to our passions and our purposes. Let's move on to listening to yourself. How is that an important part of uh, the work that you do as well? So I think that is the next most important part is really understanding what are your unique gifts and like, who are you and how you show up? Mm -hmm. And I love when you talk about everyone is different and unique. Yeah. It has a different personality type. And the more that you can understand that, the more that you can start to move forward on this path. It it really is a path. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. We're going to talk about acceptance and forgiveness in the next step, but it's so important that we just take those individual steps. And so for me, when I think about listening to myself and what it meant on my journey, For me, it was actually taking the plunge to understand that I actually don't love working in corporate, even though I was Mm -hmm. successful in corporate, didn't love it as much as I wanted to, um, and really tapping into that entrepreneurship journey. And Mm -hmm. I'm a spiritual woman. God has really called me to serve others by helping them achieve the same success I have and sharing resources, knowledge, and et cetera. And as I kind of go through that, listen to myself, understanding who I am and how I show up has helped Mm -hmm. me start to get more in tune with that. Yeah, definitely. Well, and there's also a little bit of the the hard side now that we're stepping into forgiveness, uh, just like you said, of understanding that maybe you're you're wanting to take a different direction from what you were doing. And it can be hard because how can I throw away, especially like yourself and many women that leave corporate, corporate refugees that leave corporate and, you know, get into entrepreneurship. It could be so scary and such a risk to to throw away, quote unquote, a successful career to start something new where you have zero guarantees for the most part. That's the life of an entrepreneur, right? Um, And then dealing not only with other people's opinions, but then your own, right? Those uh, negative thoughts and um, just the uncertainty that comes with all of that. Uh, So let's move into uh, forgiving yourself because even when you just make that decision, right? That's the scary part. But then there are still going to be challenges after you made the decision that may, you know, make you second guess yourself. So how do we move through all of that? Let's speak a little bit more about forgiveness. Absolutely. So for me, again, with that leaving, how do I leave corporate and get into purpose? It was super scary. Mm -hmm. It was scary because I felt like I'd spent over 10 years building this career. I got into a point where I felt like I was chasing titles and bigger compensation packages and had gotten so far away from my purpose. By the time I realized what my purpose was, I was angry that it took me so long to get there. Yeah. Like I have wasted so much of my life and time on this wrong path and chasing the wrong things. And so for me, it was really having acceptance in the moment and acceptance Mm. that everything in our past is how we got to our present. Right. Not gone through this corporate journey and all of these things, I may not be able to now show up as a person I am and do the work that God has called me to do. And so I had to make peace with that. At first it was like, gosh, I've wasted so much time and how to live my life this way. And how do I unravel this thing I've built that's Mm -hmm. taken on a life of its own. Um, But I do think there is a, a acceptance around it and forgiveness and just saying, Hey, every day I wake up, I have a chance to be better. Every day I get a chance that I wake up to be who I'm called to be. Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking about the past and all the time we've wasted is how do I make the most of this moment? And that is the way that I get to the future that I want to create. Right. Yeah. And and it's a lot about the gratitude as well of what are the lessons that I learned in that path to equip me for this moment right now, because nothing is by chance and um, a woman of faith here myself. So I do believe that everything is there for a reason. We're exactly what we're supposed to be and we're being prepared for the next step. Before moving on to the empowered uh, piece or to the empower yourself uh, step, I would love to ask you and to hear your take on the forgiveness of others as well. Because that's one of the things that I, I touch on is when you're able to forgive yourself and you're also able to forgive people around you. I'm curious, was your trend- transition into uh, entrepreneurship hard as well when it comes to to your immediate family or maybe friends? Was that something that you received a little bit of pushback as well? Definitely. Definitely. Not not maybe as, as much with our first business. So my husband and I have okay. always explored entrepreneurship. And so we had a food truck, Ooh. but we decided that the food truck, which was doing well, it was super fun, but the lifestyle was not what we desired. Mm. We never saw each other. It was nights and weekends. Oh, yeah. 
turnover is tough in the restaurant industry. And it was when we decided to move away from that business that we got a lot of pushback from our family because they didn't understand that we were like, this was our first business. It's not our last. Mm. And we understand that the next one, we've learned so much in this first journey, the next one's going to be even better. We get to package all these things up. And our parents were definitely disappointed at first starting out because they're like, you work so hard to build this. We saw what you put into it and where we were going, talking about helping entrepreneurs. And my husband helps entrepreneurs understand how to leverage business credit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something they understood that they could tangibly touch. And so me and my husband just kind of had to take a leap of faith Mm -hmm. that we know where we're going and we really trust this process and purpose Mm -hmm. and we'll show them and kind of bring our family along. And so uh, that's definitely happened. We love our parents to death and they are just amazing supporters. Mm -hmm. But there was that moment where it was this kind of fear that it's easy to have your friends and loved ones push that fear onto you. Right. And yeah. as an entrepreneur, you really have to be firm mm-hmm. and, uh, and going forward. Yeah. No, that is tough because at, at times it's hard to separate like their concern and love for us from you're projecting your fears onto me. And this is my journey and I get to do this. Um, it is tough. I, I definitely uh, resonate with that. And also I feel like there's a different mindset when it comes to older generations as well of so you are doing something, it's working, stick with it for 40, 50, your entire life, right? years, your entire life, where especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, it is easier. Because I think, especially coming from corporate, once you've taken that huge risk, it's it, it's like you're, you're uh, strengthening that muscle of what can I do differently now that I can kind of, it, it's not like you're burning everything down, but just like you said, you're repackaging it in a different way, (laughs) but people from the outside may not see that. So yeah, love that story. So cool. All right. Let's talk about empower yourself. Tell us more how uh, you've empowered yourself and obviously how you're empowering other women out there and entrepreneurs. So I'll take two, two angles of that because I think one is what we do for ourselves. And then the second part is really community, Mm -hmm. which is so important to surround yourselves with people who are supporting you, who understand what you're going through, who can love on you, who you can sometimes vent to, who are going to give you that encouragement. Yeah. But for myself, it really was having to prioritize health. Mm. I don't get it right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I find myself kind of going back into that muscle, right? It's like this memory muscle of, I call it grind mode, right? Going back into grind mode. And I'm like, that's not where I want to be. And so for me, it's being true and honoring the aspect of I prioritize my health. I prioritize. And that includes my spirituality as well and my family. And again, it always goes back to how can I be the best version of myself? And those are the things that I go to, uh, to really show up in a, a positive way. So for me, it's all about pouring in in that way, continuing to learn and grow. I think, especially if you feel like you're called to lead others, Mm -hmm. then you have to always continue to grow yourself. Yes. I can't be stagnant and want to lead other people. I have to continue Mm -hmm. to learn network, be better. So I continue to pass that to other people around me. And so I've just, it's a, I don't know if you've heard of the lift while you climb narrative of as Mm -hmm. we climb to the top, we have to lift people away and then they lift people. And my mentors, I've had really amazing women mentors Mm -hmm. who taught that to me. And now watching them say, Brooke, you're, you're the next version and you get to teach and bring people up. And then guess what? They're going to teach and bring people up and you get this really amazing ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it all starts in kind of trusting yourself and making sure you're showing up the way that you need to do because you can't pour from a minty cup. Right. And so I show up um, as a person who I am authentically and really share um, vulnerably sometimes, then how can I inspire and, and bring others along? Yeah, that's so true. And we we can't reach the top, whatever the top is on our own. And even if we could, it it there is no point in achieving amazing things and not having anyone to celebrate it with, right? It can get lonely, especially in entrepreneurship. And on that note, I do want to ask you, uh, what are some of the achievements that you're super proud of having accomplished in your business, but also in your lifetime? Oh yeah, I've got I've got a couple. Um, a lot of them are around what my clients have been able to do Mm. that makes me really happy. And, you know, I can give it to you from two angles because I work with founders who are pursuing tech businesses, large scale companies. And so this one company I worked with, uh, they were called ping. It's like AI company. And I met this founder team right out of, they're pretty much right out of um, their MBA program in Berkeley. They were in an accelerator program 
we were in a little room with no windows talking about this idea mm-hmm. and did a one-week consulting project with them. Ended up staying on as a, a advisor for two and a half years and really supported the company through their growth. I walked them into their very first client in North America, wow. watched them grow through raising a 12 million Series A. Nice. Uh, and that's in venture capital. And they just raised a 34 million Series B and are off to the races. Love to see it. And Another example is a woman I worked with who had a, a patent sip business and she really wanted to grow it. And we talked about beyond just being patent sip for the consumers, thinking about interest, uh, introducing a B2B model Ooh. where she was selling to businesses. And uh, she took that faith, right? Took that leap of faith to try it. She wasn't familiar with selling to businesses. There was that fear there. Mm-hmm. She got over it and tried it. And she sent me this picture of her in her living room with stacks of FedEx Xboxes around her of these wow. paint the kids because she had landed a business client that wanted to partner with her to have her ship the materials out and then lead a virtual session for one of their corporate workshops. And so that's amazing. Seeing, oh, it's so amazing, right? Mm-hmm. When you see your clients reach that level of success. And I would say those are probably two of the things I'm most proud of is just helping other people build what they what they want to build. That's amazing. I love that. That's a sure way of empowering yourself is to seeing the results that your clients were able to get because of your support, right? Knowing that you had a, a part in that growth uh, and in that transformation, it's just, I feel like that's the, the greatest reward for sure. I love that. And that leads us into the transformation piece, uh, which I also I always like to say that transformation is uh, being more self-accepting, right? Um, learning how to leverage what already is there instead of trying to be somebody else. So I'd love to hear your take on maybe things that you um, have learned to leverage about yourself, strengths that maybe you didn't recognize before or that you thought were weaknesses and they have come in very handy as you have built your business. Tell me more. Definitely. So again, that corporate background, if you've experienced it, I think people will relate. Yeah. I really had to tap back into being authentically me and speaking from the heart because I'd really created a mask in some ways mm. of who I was. It was, I'm a sales leader. I'm this person. I have to show up a certain way. I can't use exclamation marks in my email because people <laughs> will take that the wrong way as a woman, which right. is so silly, right? It's yeah. so silly. But playing this game and for me, the transformation was an understanding. I don't have to play that game. Mm. I can actually be authentically me. Right. And that is actually what makes me special. Mm. It's not trying to be someone else. It's being me and sharing my story. And again, loving who I genuinely am and overcoming that fear to put myself out there and start to tell my stories and talk to people like you, Marta, where we can have these conversations yeah. around personal moments. And so for mm-hmm. me, that was a big moment of transformation that had to happen for me to step into who I was being called to be. Mm-hmm. I could not wear the same. I think I just saw a post that was like, um, we have to stop. We have to stop being the versions of ourselves that we created to survive. Mm, that's huge. Just hit me. Cause I, oh, like, I know how many <laughs> versions of myself that I create to get yeah. through some situation and right. unwinding that and uh, unpack. I think all of your steps speak to that, right? How do we yeah. unwind those that's versions it. that we felt like we had to be to just be us? Yeah. And so that was the transformation. And I'm still going through it. I think oh, it's yeah. never, never ending. <laughs> never ending. Even now when I'm even writing something to post or a story, every time I feel myself pause, like, do I say that? Right. Is it okay? <laughs> okay. Is that too much? Is it yeah. too vulnerable, too real? Mm-hmm. And I have to go back and kind of revisit what I'm being called to do, how I want to show yeah. up, and the fact that all of us are so unique. All of our stories, there's no other person that's existed who's just like us. And that's why we have a responsibility to share it because someone needs to hear it. Yeah, that's our gift, right? We are the gift. <laughs> Everything that we are because it's different and no, nobody else is it. Oh, this is so good. I love it so much. Thank you so much for sharing your insight and all of the stories. Tell us more about um, how people can work with you. So if someone is interested in learning more about you know, your packages or tell us more how that works and how they could connect with you as well. Absolutely. So uh, again, you can find all of the information on the services I offer under thebrookdaniels.com. Historically, we've had, and that's Brooke with an E, so T-H-E-B-R-O-O-K-E, Daniels with an S.com. 
Historically, I, I worked mostly with founders that wanted to do an accelerator. So I have an okay. eight-week program in group coaching where we go through my seven-step system. Nice. Really helps if you're a founder in the ideation phase, or maybe you found some success but don't know how to grow. Mm-hmm. We help you really think about your strategy. We help you dive into the numbers of your business model and figure out what you need to get it to the next level. We talk about differentiation from your competitors and also really, again, that sales GTM and how we can beef it up. And so for a lot of clients, it is that, hey, I'm only selling one way and can I introduce partnerships or a business to business model to really get to that next level of growth? Mm And um, But I'm happy to share that I will be launching an actual academy soon in the next, yeah, 30 to 60 days that will be coming out for people that maybe don't want that eight week condensed accelerator, yeah. but want to be able to more self-serve knowledge of their own time, or they're still thinking about their idea, but want some support early days. And so I will be launching an academy with more of that information in small bites and then supporting that through also um, uh, expanded community. That's amazing. I love it. So good. Well, to wrap it up, I would love to ask a load of question. What is an empowered woman, Brooke? <laughs> I think an empowered woman is someone who focuses on or maybe takes the time to understand who they really are, their spirituality, their purpose, and has the courage to take action on it. Mm, Amazing. Very deep. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. It's been wonderful to get to know you more. And I know our listeners are going to get so much out of this. So I appreciate you. Truly a pleasure, Marta. And thank you for writing this amazing book. It just spoke to me on so many levels. So thank you for having me today. And I hope it continues to impact other women out there. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Do connect with Brooke. The links are in the show notes. And don't forget to join the Empowered Woman Book Club. It's free and it's off social media. We'll be having lots of fun and breakthroughs together starting Monday, November 7th. Go to martasbrook.com forward slash book club to join in. The link is in the show notes. Until next time. Bye.